Alright, how's it going you guys? We are here today for the update release video. So, it's already been released. We did um, testing as a stream uh, that actually went across about three days, I think. Um, mainly because there was more uh, Twilight Forest changes that need to be checked out. And I had to go all the way through. Um, which I did do. I don't have all my trophies up. Um, but we'll get into that in a minute. So, this is update 61700. And you'll note that it is a, uh, up in build number from 16 to 17. And that is because of the fluid property change making uh magic fluids like acidic um fluids where they will destroy things if they're not in the proper uh receptacle um but first off there is a note um about the uh hack going around in the modded minecraft called pipe bleed uh he gives a link here to a mod that is supposed to fix it we've already gone through our mod pack and updated everything last update that could have been affected that we know of uh from the list there should be no issues in my mod pack so therefore i won't be adding that mod um but if you go to greg's changelog you'll see the link for it there um, or just ask, I can pop it in for you. But anyways, the next thing is there is a new fluid property. Makes it more difficult to pipe and store magical fluids. Um, you guys already know about this or should from our last update. Um, basically, palladium, THC, tungsten-based alloys will be able to store magical fluids. Uh, magical materials like ironwood, thomium, netherite, adamantium, man of steel. They'll be able to hold man magical fluids. The thermos can, Greg says, due to a vacuum. Um, the vacuum is in between the two walls of the plastic and aluminum. Uh, the vacuum would have absolutely nothing to do with the fluid. So I feel he's wrong in this, but... I understand his reasoning for it, even if his logic is flawed, and that is the thermos is for is really great for hauling around uh, potions. So I can completely understand why he chose to allow them to do magic fluids, but his logic is a little warped, in my opinion. Uh, dedicated vanilla glass bottles will to continue to hold their material. Um, if you've been to any GT forts, make sure that you don't have any of these wooden barrels that are holding anything that um, they shouldn't, mainly holy water. Um, you could find in these wooden barrels. I have since taken care of all of that. Greg did say that they will only cause an issue uh, when they're placed in the world like this. So being in here, they're not going to have any issue. And so with that, you can just take a funnel, hold it in your hand, slap it onto something else to get rid of it. Um, if you end up updating, I would make sure to go through and check everything very well before you do. Uh, one of the main magic fluids is the... Uh, liquid XP, that is a magic flow fluid, so if you're following along with what we did around here, make sure you change out your wooden barrel that holds your liquid XP and the pipes. Um, wooden buckets will still be able to handle rainbow tree sap, which is also a um, magical fluid, which by the way, we now have two of out there. Um, I do need to go out there and tap the other one, um, so you can still use a 
wooden bucket on those, even though the wooden bucket isn't uh, magical pr magic proof. He just doesn't want to get rid of them. Um, if you have Thalmcraft installed and something gets destroyed because of the magic proof, it will spawn flux goo slash gas. Um, so be careful of that if you play Thumbcraft. And I guess if you want flux goo or gas, I don't know much about Thumbcraft, but that's a way you could make some. <clears throat> um, he did a fix where he accidentally deleted all the furnace recipes for HBM's nuclear tech mod. That has been fixed. Um, Crucible Crossings, he had some really rare issue with them. Um, the person that had the issue has tested the fix, and it's fixed. I We didn't test it because I have no idea what it was, and it was such an obscure thing that uh, it didn't bother. Since the person that knew what the bug was had tested it, and everything was fine. Um, glass bottles of holy water are now able to cure zombie villagers. So if you take a weakness potion, just like you would with a um, golden apple, if I can remember where in the heck I put them, because I did have some around here somewhere. And I honestly can't remember that they are holy water. So basically just splash the um, zombie with the weakness potion and then just right click it with the holy water. Don't drink this stuff. It'll give you poison. And you will get yourself a transforming zombie. Which you can see we did in the testing and we have ourselves... Is a, a villager in here now. So that is a uh, nice way to save you on some gold and give you a use for all of that holy water we keep getting that is virtually useless. Um, also, another thing, I guess I can show you this one now. Uh, you can lure villagers with a emerald just like you can a cow with wheat so you'll see he runs right for me because i'm holding the emerald so that is a uh, nice way to move your villagers around to get them into your minecart or whatnot maybe you gotta try to make a breeder and you want to get them out of there or whatever um that's very nice for that. Um, I'm not a big person for uh, breeding villagers, so uh, I'm not real worried about it. I end up with uh, making a mistake and having an overflow and killing servers when I try, so uh, I try to stay away from villager breeding. Okay, so next thing on the list here. There was a blatant copy pasta error with um, mercury bottles. I have no idea what that is. This is another one of those things that Greg tested it, knew it was fixed. It was something he found in the code, and he fixed it. Um... I don't remember there being ever that I had an issue with it. Um, so that's why we chose not to test it. Um, another one for Thomcraft, If you play with Thomcraft, uh, GT tools made out of Thomcraft's void metal will now have the appropriate warping one effect on them. Um, he changed added a maximum range to nuclear reactors of 200 of nuclear radiation 
of 200 for a running reactor. Now that is the max. That doesn't mean that if you have a really small reactor that doesn't put out very much radiation, that it's going to go 200. It's a maximum of 200 that it can go. And then for a um, 500 for an exploding reactor. Remember, uh, reactor cores do not actually explode. Um, they just void their uh, contents, which give me just a second. We're going to jump over to a test world real quick. Be right back. Okay, so we're here. This guy is going to get really annoying. Uh, we're here in a brand new fresh world. I just uh, put this in here. We're going to blow this up real quick. And the reason is there is something that I didn't get to test. There we go. So that does its trick. So um, these were still rendering inside of there. You couldn't see that they voided. But you'll see that that is what happens when you uh, blow up a reactor now. So one second, we'll be back in the normal world. All right, we're back here, and the next thing is the magnetic separator. It now has a fluid slot. Uh, that way, there is no recipes for it yet. Um, that's just in case he decides he want to, wants to add a way to magnetically separate uh, fluids. He can do so, uh, but that was added in this update. Um, let's see, enchanted books can stack, um, I don't have any, I did create some in the, uh, library, but I'm not going to waste the time to run over there just to show you that they do stack, just be careful because the vanilla anvil will void extra books if they are stacked because they're not supposed to stack. So if you have, say, four sharpness one books you're wanting to put um, onto a sword, make sure you do them one at a time and you split them to one at a time. Don't, don't think you can put all four stacked together in the anvil or you'll void three of your four books. Uh, it'll only take one at a time. But that is just for people like Greg who likes to enchant um, books to see, you know, what great kind of enchant combinations they can get and then put them together on a specific tool. Uh, I don't do this, so this literally means nothing to me, but, um, it is something that I know a lot of people like to do. I don't like enchanting. Um, I would rather everything just have Greg's, uh, default enchants on the tools and just be done with it. Um, uh, let's see. GT6 pickaxes now have the ability to penetrate armor. Um, if I can remember where I put it, uh, which I probably can't. At least not. There it is. So you'll see that this pickaxe says can penetrate armor. Um, but remember, pickaxes are a terrible weapon, so the attack damage on this pickaxe is only 2.75 hearts. Um, but if you get a lucky hit with it, you can do uh, about twice as much of that. Uh, when we tested it, I hit one zombie that was wearing armor, really didn't change um, the amount at, at all, if any. And then the next hit, it took like double the amount so um that is a nice thing if you're going against something armor which greg brought it up that armor penetration means you can use it against the lich uh which i completely forgot about um and when in since i'm in single player where it's not having to deal with the lag i did it with uh just knocking his stuff back um and was just fine with it.
Um, oh, this is a nice change, but it's also kind of a pain in the butt. Um, size, do not harvest lily pads. Um, I had an issue with this when I was trying to harvest my crops out here. Because we use Glotus right here in the middle. Well, now if you right click, it will not harvest the lily pad. The only issue with that is like here, I cannot do the, you know, three by three. I have to do a two by two area to harvest them because it'll, I cannot click on that block. But if you're doing um, like Pam stuff here, uh, I don't have any around here because I just left them open. But same thing, you would not be able to right click. It doesn't matter which way it is, you're not doing it. Um, the reason why I complained about it was because you would have it pop off along with the food. I didn't realize that complaining about it was going to have it to where now you have to like not use the area around it or harvest it differently uh, because of it. But at least you don't have to worry about it popping off, which is a real pain in the butt because then things can fall down in there and you got to go in after it. You know the idea. So that's a new change. Uh, let's see. Uh, he added a rainbow wood fluid barrel, which is roughly on par with a uh, ironwood barrel. If I can... Sorry about that. If I can find it in here. Yeah, here a plank I should be able to find it this way um, so it's just steel or iron rods the uh, rainbow wood planks and your glue and you get a rainbow wood barrel um, that gives you a way to sort store your rainbow sap if you get lucky enough to find a rainbow tree or a rainbow sapling in the overworld and you don't have ironwood yet um, you can also store your XP in it so that gives you a more early game way of doing that easier way of doing that um, and it has the same size as ironwood okay so now that we've got through I do believe all of the non Twilight Forest stuff um, we will go through the Twilight Forest changes so Twilight Forest loot chests are replaced with Greg Tech ones and added some more loot to them. You will see here that I have um, all these loot chests in here. This is what I got from going through the Twilight Forest. So you have your labyrinth. There are two of them in the... Well, let's start over here. That's Stronghold. We'll start up here, I guess. Yes, I'm very, very uh, organized. So, your basic places, uh, basement caches, um, tree caches, hedge maze, and this is another basement one. Um, and you can see they, that they say contain the loot because it's Greg Tech, you can pick them up. Um, also, when you put them down um, and open them, none of those have been open, obviously. But when you open them, you will get a bit of XP from doing so. And you can see it has some of the basic loot from um, all of the normal loot tables that you would get. Uh, this is kind of nice. I got partial crate of steel ingots, 13 of them, and 8 partial crates of brass in there and there's 16 more partial crates of steel ingots so that is a really nice one there also got a little bit of iridium some silver coins 
and you can tell what everything else is there. Um, we're actually going to have a live stream on Friday, getting some more work done on the uh, farming stuff out there, trying to get me a biomass setup made. And we're going to go through all of these loot chests and see what all, open them all up and see what's all in them. Uh, I'm not going to open them all here. I just wanted to show you what they were. So obviously that's bronze, that's brass, and that's bismuth. Um, the Naga does not have a loot chest, so nothing for that. You have your um, Hollow Hills. You have three different ones. You can find in the small hollow hill these bronze reinforced chest in the medium you'll find arsenic bronze reinforced and regular bronze and then in the large hollow hill you will find the arsenic bronze full chests and the arsenic bronze reinforced chests you can find both of these um in the large one we'll go ahead and check out one of these so you can see it does have some twilight loot in there. It's a charm of life, ironwood pickaxe, and then other random bits and bobs, along with some torch berries. Uh, then after the hollow hills, you have the lich tower here, which has the gold reinforced wooden chests and golden chests that are in the magic tower. Uh, the lich doesn't drop a chest. That's their loot just normally drops. Um, these are from like the uh, library areas that are in the tower. And then the your gas. Now with the your gas, the your gas drops a chest and you will have to open that chest to get the contents of it out. That's what this palladium chest is here, is her final chest. Um, but it's only about six stacks worth of stuff that you'll have to transport out, so it's not a big deal to have to open it. Um, if you're wanting to get your, your gas trophy at that point, but it is absolutely beautiful for fiery tears. This is how many fiery tears I got um, out of that chest. So, beautiful there. Um, basement caches spawn in the little area with the uh, nature stuff. There's usually a tree and a little farm area inside of fences. Uh, those spawn there. And then you have these night metal reinforced chests all over the place. And I got some regular night metal ones as well throughout that place. Um, the stronghold is steel chests, steel reinforced chest, and a palladium reinforced chest from in there. The, um, the steel chests here should be the end, what, after you kill the, um, minotaur dude, you'll get this chest, which you can see has steel leaf like they normally do, um, along with some other normal things. <clears throat> then we have the labyrinth chest. There's brass and brass reinforced. Um, nice thing about you. Nice thing about them is to, because there's normally a double chest sitting there of wooden double chests, um, there is a firefly in a jar sitting next to this chest so you don't get uh, two of these you only get one but because there is that firefly in a jar sitting next to it that stops mobs from spawning inside of that little room and setting off the explosives inside that room um, one thing you do have to be careful of is these chests give out a redstone signal when they are initially opened so they will still set off the explosives if you don't 
collect the chest. If you just right click on it real quick, you will make a boom boom. So don't do that. <clears throat> um, but it's nice because you can just hack them and get them out of there. Uh, remember that you can use Greg Tech scissors to deactivate the uh, string. Um, this is the only mod that I know of that can actually disarm that trap. Um, any of the other ones, when you do this, um, I had an issue with um, steel shears from Railcraft. I was using those. I didn't. I figured it'd be better to make those instead of regular iron shears when I went through one time. And uh, no, they don't work. So if there's any other one out there, let us know. But Greg Techs are the only ones I know of that can disarm that those traps without uh, screwing it up. And if you bring a drill, they collect what you harvest so you don't have to worry about the iron bars falling and activating the chest too. I kind of completely forgot about that and just happened to be using my drill. So, um, then we also have the, um, Aurora Tower. Here's the Aurora Tower chests. Um, and then there's also the Dark Tower and the Troll Cave. Um, so you can get Meteoric Steel chests out of the, uh, Troll Cave, Chromium, out of the Aurora Tower and Night Metal again out of the Dark Tower. Uh, you will have to open the um, Troll Cave to get your magic beans if you are going up to the Cloud uh, area. Um, and I did not realize it, but this works as an infinite lighter. <clears throat> it's something that I completely didn't realize. And when Greg, when I was going through and going up to the um, end castle that has nothing in it and lighting all of the things on fire, Greg goes, well, now you have an infinite lighter. So this is a really nice reason to go through the Twilight Forest. Not only for all of the loots that we now get, because um, doing vanilla looting through those are really kind of boring. Um, now you can do it a lot faster, a lot more efficient. Bring home your big old box full of stuff, and you're good to go. And you get Craig Tech loot and other stuff as well. And by the time, once you get into the Troll Caves, you can have an infinite lighter. Um, the giant pickaxes, remember from last time, uh, you can use those in the boxinator to turn any of the stones into the giant cobblestone. It does not use them up. You can also make the giant leaves and you can make the giant wood. And I do believe you can also make the giant obsidian. So if for some reason you want those, you can make them in a MV macerator. And then you can have yourself a giant pickaxe anytime you want one. Uh, if you like that 3x3 three three mining type of thing. Uh, let me look here. I do have this left. I want to see if there's anything I'm missing here. <clears throat> let me read through this just a little bit here. Um, oh, that was one of the things I completely forgot to tell you. Uh, Twilight Forest loot chest replaced with Greg Tech ones and added some more loot to them. They will also contain a few fitting items from all of the vanilla loot tables. You know, the ones other mods tend to add stuff to. Note, the tower keys inside the full metal loot chest in the dark tower will drop separately from the loot, meaning you can harvest the unopened loot chest and you do 
as you do with all of the others and still get the key inside of it. Now, it would have been absolutely glorious if Greg would have done that with the magic beans so we didn't have to open the one for the in the troll cave to get the uh, magic beans out. But yes, these, um, where the hell are they? They're the night metal ones, these right here. So these eight have the tower keys in them. And when you break the chest, it pops out separately right into your inventory. You have no issues. So, um, and that's how a really nice way of knowing that the chest is one with a key is all the ones with keys are the night metal rather than the night metal reinforced. Um, Twilight, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. yep, uh, opening loot chests will now give you quite a bit of XP. Remember, you can just take unopened loot chests home and open them in the safety, have less inventory clutter. And then the last thing is Twilight Bunnies now drop the same stuff at Turin Bunnies do or Harvest Craft Bunny Meat. We had fun with this in the stream because Greg had a bit of a bug because I don't have Epiturum, so it was trying to drop the um, rabbit fur or rabbit hide into my inventory or from the rabbit, but it couldn't. There was a null point exception, and it crashed my game. And one time we had a rabbit that must have drowned, and it crashed my game. So we, we had all kinds of fun with that. Um, but you'll see I have raw rabbit in here. That's from killing some rabbits in the twilight. Um, killing a squirrel actually gives you hazelnuts and peanuts from Greg Tech. Um, and then the other thing is that you also have these cow horns. From killing cows, you have cow hooves that drop. From killing cows, there are boar tusks. That's from killing the boars in the twilight, not from killing pigs. You have sheep horns, deer hooves, and deer antlers. And then there's also, you get ectoplasm from random things when you kill the specter ghost things in the large hollow hills. I don't know how old that is, um, but I just noticed it, so I wanted to bring it up. Um, if you play with random things and you need ectoplasm, that's a way for you to get it. Um, you can use it to make spectra iron in the crucible, um, which I did not realize that. That is a way of getting silk touch, and it looks like that's actually going to be a halfway decent material um, for silk touching. So um, if you don't have amber and you want to get you a decent silk touch pick, uh, go get you some spectral iron and make you one that way. Um, it only takes one ectoplasm, ectoplasm to one iron. So I can easily make... Uh, well, I can make a silk touch sword. I'd have to go in and get some more, but uh, that's a good use for that there. I did not realize that that was a thing because I don't play with that mod. Um, it also shows that it gives Infinity 3. If you guys remember from uh, when we were doing testing, Infinity on a gun does not give you... A infinite amount of ammo but it does reduce the amount of ammo used so that's why infinity 3 is actually better than infinity 1 so if you made yourself a gun out of the uh, spectral iron you would actually be able to have infinity 3 on the gun uh, if we go to the roll bender here and looked at a curved plate uh actually that's not sh there they are holy crap i'm blind 
So pistol gives you infinity three. The attack damage for the gun itself is only two hearts of damage. Um, same for the rifle, but you get infinity three on it. So if you have some really nice um, rounds that you don't want to make a whole bunch of, but you want to use a whole bunch of, that might be an idea, like netherite. Netherite is really good bullets. Does lots of damage. Um, and all of this stuff here has two uses. You can either turn it into bone meal in a shredder if you uh, need bone meal. Or you can cook it into sticky goo. Sticky goo is literally just a slime ball. So you can use it for a lead. You can use it for open blocks line. All of that kind of stuff. You can make sticky pistons out of it. You can put it into a mixer with water and make glue. Um, you can also do that in a mixing bowl. So if you don't want to run off and find a cooler biome to get you your uh, rubber trees to get sticky resin early on. Uh, you can just go kill some cows, get some hooves, and make yourself some uh, a lead and some uh, glue that way. So I'm quite sure that you can also get um, hooves from a horse but I'm absolutely not going to kill a horse to test it because if Crazy found out I did, she would beat my butt. And I prefer not to have my butt beat just for testing out if you can kill a horse and get a hoof. Um, but I'm quite sure that's possible. And that is it for the change log. Now there is one other thing that is not in the change log, and this is a fix from last time for the burning boxes that Greg added um, that you actually could not craft them. The arsenic copper and the arsenic bronze. You'll see that they um, you could make the solid ones here because they just use oops, wrong one. Uh, they just use plates but the liquid ones you could not do because there were no um, pipes because Greg decided to use item pipes for these metals rather than fluid pipes just to change things up and be weird. Uh, so you'll see that the arsenic copper uses curved. The arsenic bronze uses curved as well for the regular ones. Um, if we get to the dense ones here, dense liquid, it actually uses item pipes because that's what they are. Um, so you use large item pipes for those. Then you have the gas ones. Uh, they use a large for the dense. Uh, let's go over here. And then just a curve for the regular ones. And then your fluidized ones use curved and a arsenic bronze rotor or a um, arsenic copper rotor and curved. So you do have some kind of weird ones there where you got to use uh, item pipes, but uh, they are now craftable. And I do believe that is it. I do want to remind you, though, that if you do go and get your fiery tears uh, from the last update, uh, you can use your fiery tears to bathe more materials now. Um, so you can actually do black steel, red steel, blue steel, and Damascus steel. Um, which will make some really nice tools. Um, so having all of this is really quite nice. If you uh, go through up to the your gas tower and get you some tears, uh, you can have some really decent um, meteoric or Damascus tools that'll have a little bit of fire on them. 
the Meteoric Remember will auto collect your items for you. Um, so you could have a pretty durable auto collecting pickaxe. I do know that um, Ung here loves his auto, auto collecting pickaxes. He actually uses construction pickaxes. Uh, just because they auto collect, he doesn't like having to pick up his things. Well, now he won't have to uh, use a crappy construction pickaxe that's slow. He can take his butt in the twilight, get him some gas tear or some uh, blood tears or the uh, the blood from this guy. You know this stuff, fiery blood and fiery tears, and make him a good proper uh, flaming. Meteoric or mid meadow flame. The heck did he call that? He's got some weird name for this stuff. Yeah, here it is. Medio flame red steel. That's the stuff I was trying to get out of my face. So you'll see that has fifteen thirty six durability for the red one, fourteen oh eight for the blue one. 1280 for the black one and the regular one is 1280 as well for the durability it's quality four material um so that's really good um you can actually pick up an iridium crucible if you needed to with that and it's got speed of 14 which is pretty good and since it's on a tool you would have Fire Aspect 3. Um, I'm actually wondering, since he has Auto Smelt behind that, if that means it would Auto Smelt your sand if you put it on a shovel. I hate the idea of that, but it's there if you want it. And then if you use it for weapons, you'll have Fire Aspect 3, Smite 3, Sharpness 3, Werebane 1, Disjunction 1, and Dissolving 2. So that would make a really nice weapon uh quite early on because you can make that pretty early once you get the uh right ingredients to make it i do believe 42 minutes of me rambling about a change log is about enough so i hope you guys enjoyed if you're still here hit the buttons do the things and i will see you guys next time which will be on friday for our live stream Take it easy.